And this is to go even further beyond! What's good guys, it's your Super Saiyan Sensei and today I welcome you to back training in the hyperbolic time chamber of JD Gym. So, always start off with pull-ups, it's just a fundamental exercise I always begin with this. Uh, sometimes I get fancy with it and do some muscle-ups and calisthenics and stuff but always pull-ups, it's a fundamental that should not be missing any back routine. Okay, next up, bent over barbell rows. Now, I've done deadlifts recently to this so my low back was quite tender so I went nowhere near as heavy as I pretty much wood uh, but this felt really good anyway so when I know my lower back's tender I don't miss this exercise I just um, I just amp up the reps a little bit okay so uh, 15 rep sets 12 to 15 rep sets is what I usually go for the aim is with this high volume approach is to not have too much of a rest period in between sets you're not trying to replicate the same rest period you would if you were going for a seriously heavy set of like six or five reps you know you're going for a different approach to the training but the end goal is relatively similar but I believe this way is more effective of traumatizing the muscle which in turn leads to growth and development. Drop set. <laughs> Why don't you do these things, especially if you're not getting enough volume? I say not every test in your usual sets. Always end off with the drop set. Or you can keep mini ones between each set, which I'll show in another video, but hold on, I'm gonna take this off. <laughs> uh, always increase some sort of drop set, okay? In all seriousness, they do push the muscle to another degree. You can never get used to a fucking drop set. How many programs have gotten used to? How many trainer approaches have gotten used to? A drop set pushes that next level. The man's so much more of the muscle, which turn this back to you with high control for your performance later on down the line. Plus, fuck, no matter how exhausted you are, you can actually get so much out of the session with drop sets, regardless of the weight you're lifting that day. You might be weak as fuck. Traditionally, traditionally I pull about three plates aside, but today I had one meal. So, yeah, one meal is pretty much. It's two energy drinks, so I only want to drink. It's nothing. But look at me, I'm fucked up. Back, front, off the drop sets. Lap pull downs next, of course. Now let me tell you guys, in fact, you know what? I've never explained to you guys actually why I do lap pull downs immediately after a bent over row or a deadlift. I wouldn't do a deadlift and then immediately a bent over row simply because of the tension that builds up in my lower back from the initial uh, bent over row or deadlift. So I wouldn't just go into another exercise that bears crazy burden on my lower back. So I'd always go into either one of those two exercises, uh, bent, bent, heavy bent over rows or high reps or deadlift straight into lap pull downs to give my lower back a chance to fucking rest. But obviously not rest my upper back, I want to still smash my back. So this is a great way to stretch out and, re and rest the lower back a little bit uh, before you go and kill it again with an exercise that burdens it with, uh, with stress. One thing with lap pull downs, I go quite heavy but I never go to the point where I'm literally go doing the, the limbo. With the, with the weight where I'm, literally my back is parallel to the floor. Uh, I just don't believe in that certain going that heavy to the extent where your form breaks that much. But I do believe in a bit of external movement to help, you know, get that weight, get that heavy weight down. Because not everything can be picture perfect, you see, guys. That's just the reality of trying to get stronger and trying to build muscle. Last thing as well, guys, make sure you're trying to bring the elbows in to the torso as you bring it down. You're not just pulling down for the sake of it. Bring the elbows into the, to the torso, towards the torso area, and you feel a huge contraction with every single damn rep with the lap pull down. Watch how that changes up for you. One thing I think as well, guys, that people are too obsessed with, um, way too obsessed with numbers. What numbers am I hitting? Am I hitting eight reps of this weight rather than your performance? So you might feel like shit after like those eight reps of the heavy weight, but there's more to squeeze out that muscle on the exercise. People look to leave things in reserve. 
have nobody that's a muscle building or bodybuilding way to approach, in my opinion of course, my approach. Um, push yourself, man. Don't be so obsessed with the numbers. If you don't hit the numbers on a certain day, so fucking what? Keep it moving, corporate drop set or superset to exhaust the muscle. Muscles adapt through stress, not ticks in your notebook. Remember that. I'm not sure you're not notebooks or anything, but it's the truth, man. It's the truth. You can't um, make bodybuilding too mechanical. You give, you give what you get with bodybuilding or building muscle. Simple as that. Let the superset madness begin. Now, so we've got the seated row here, uh, close neutral grip, supersetted with a crazy lat destroyer, really good at killing the lats if you do this well, it's just the stiff arm pull down, okay? I use the ropes typically for this because it complements the movement so well of when you of you scooping back and opening the arms slightly to get them past your um, past your, your, your torso, your midsection. So allow you to get the elbows even further back, it's a great contraction of your, of your lats. Now, I truly believe there is a correlation between the approach that people take and the lack of results that people are seeing uh, with their physiques in certain areas. So, I believe that a lot of people are strong now. People are shifting some really good weight and people are understanding that heavy weight builds muscle or one component, to, well, a big component to building muscle. But another one that's just as important to me is volume. That brings out the, the chiseled full 3D density look. You need to get those reps out from the depths of hell. <laughs> you need to get those reps. How long can you hang on to those painful sets for? Those are what develop and define the body, or especially over the long term, naturally as well. You can build incredible physique with that approach, but you can't give in when you feel two reps of pain and then you say, oh, no, it's too, no. You can't be giving up. That's a little bit too early in my, in my opinion, of course. You need to be able to hold on a little longer. Set, set yourself some challenges to see how long you can hang on to those painful sets. And then, if you are one of those people that like to note down the reps, maybe try and beat that the next week, okay? And you'll see how your physique changes. But if you don't do that, the heavyweight alone isn't enough of a stimulus, in my opinion. From the super set, back to the drop set approach. But with this one, every single set is a drop set. The first part of the drop set, the first 10 reps, is a heavy stimulus to get that nailed keep the form as clean as you can roll that away and then grab a lighter weight okay not too light still gotta be a challenge okay a lighter weight and then another 10 reps per arm but with this one make well with the first one too but with the lighter weight especially make sure you exaggerate good form an extra reach an extra bit of contraction because it is lighter you got more control all right so make sure you, you uh, really emphasize that when doing these sets <laughs> And to finish, three sets of pull-ups, just rectal failure. This is just to empty whatever, whatever is left in the tank and just leave the gym feeling like a boss, a true super surgeon guard. Okay, so get these pull-ups done at the end of your session. It's a good indicator to see how hard you've actually worked. <laughs> I'm always naturally good at pull-ups anyway, so I can always get a few out. Uh, but yeah, you should be ending like this. See the struggle? See this? Yep, yep, you should be ending like that. When it comes to uh, burning muscle, these days people are too concerned about the numbers and not about the stress on the muscle. The stress causes growth, the stress causes adaptation. So if you're not stressing it enough, no sleep sets, pick up sets, just fix sets, which you know you can have in a three minute rest period. Growing is going to be fucking hard. No matter the approach, no matter the push pull legs or blow split approach, it's going to be very hard to grow. So focus on uh, destroying the muscle, not just destroying, sorry, stimulating and then going past that, going past the pain, keeping going, go to places where you don't know if you're going to make it in your set, then you'll, you'll find growth. If you keep going to places where you know you can make it, three to four minutes, two minutes, whatever rest periods, you know, just tipping boxing your book, you're going to look the same pretty much for a long time. You might grow over a long period of time, but obviously you want results quicker, yes? Push yourself harder. Don't just focus on numbers, focus on stimulation, it's stress in the body, and you'll grow.